Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the February 19, 2020 business meeting of the Daytona Beach Community Redevelopment Agency, or our CRA. We're delighted to have each of you with us this evening. At this time, I would ask that Ms. Magna review the procedures for tonight's meeting. Good evening. Agendas are available in the front of the room on the table to my right. All the exhibits pertaining to items on the agenda are posted on the bulletin board. Please feel free to view the exhibits at any time during tonight's meeting. You are required to fill out a blue form to speak before the Community Redevelopment Agency. The blue forms are located next to the Assistant City Clerk, Ms. Allison Brown. You must complete the sections that ask for your name, address, topic of concern, agenda item number, signature, and date. The form must be completed and placed in the designated box. You will not be allowed to speak if your form is not placed in the designated box. Item resolutions under administrative item six are open for public comment and you may fill out a blue form to speak when that item is called. All citizens completing a blue form will be allowed to speak for two and a half minutes. When you approach the lectern, please speak clearly into the microphone and give your full name and address. The two and a half minute clock on the monitor above and directly in front of you will start running when you begin to speak. Pay close attention to your time. You will be told when your time has expired. Disorderly conduct in the public meeting of the City Commission. Article 2, Section 6238 of the City Code of Ordinances reads as follows. It shall be unlawful for any person to behave in a riotous or disorderly manner in any public meeting of the City Commission or any committee, agency, or board thereof, or to cause any unnecessary disturbances therein by force, shouting, or any other action calculated to, to disrupt such meeting or to refuse to obey any ruling of the presiding officer or such meeting relative to the orderly process thereof. All conversation must take place either at the lectern or on the dais so that everyone can hear the business being discussed tonight. Awesome. Ms. Uh, LaMagna, may we have a roll call? Commissioner Delgado? Here. Commissioner May? Here. Commissioner Gilliland? Here. Commissioner Henry? Here. Commissioner Reed? Here. Commissioner Traeger? Here. Mayor Derek L. Henry? Here. Uh, we'll now have our invocation led by Commissioner Traeger, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance mm -hmm. led by Commissioner Delgado. Heavenly Father, bless the commission and bless the audience, bless the people in our city. Help the commission to make wise and good decisions for the benefit our, of our community. Please take care of our military overseas and here and our first responders, wherever they may be, look after them. Thank you. We bless you. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll now move on to the approval of the minutes of the December 18, 2019 business meeting of the Community Redevelopment Agency. So move. Well, we have a motion from Commissioner Traeger and a second from Commissioner Gilliland. Do we have any questions or uh, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. Aye. Those in opposition, same sign. Uh, this, this time uh, we will hear from our city manager if there are any changes to tonight's agenda. No changes, Mr. Mayor. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. Aye. Those in opposition, same sign. This motion carries 7-0. We'll now move on to item number five, which is our presentation. It's the Development Administrative Services Redevelopment Brown Riverfront Esplanade Foundation, Inc. Daytona Riverfront Esplanade Master Plan Presentation. Thank you very much. I know that your time is very valuable, so we're not going to take up a lot of time, but we wanted to bring to your attention the uh, advancement of all the plans. Now, quite frankly, um, and I'm speaking for myself and all the members of the foundation, it, is, it has been and it continues to be more complex and complicated than we thought in order to achieve the objective, which is going to be a wow. And so we have Jeremy Marquis here uh, today to just give you a brief overview and then talk about the time uh, that we anticipate the bids and then starting on the project subject to the Josie Rogers house getting all fixed. So, uh, Jeremy? Good evening. I'm Jeremy Marcus, Marcus Latimer and Hallback. I'm part of the RS&H design team on this, and uh, we have 
appreciated the time, both at the foundation and your time. I am glad to say that while maybe the foundation, uh, it's a bit of a learning curve, uh, they have a very good team around them that we, we know what we're doing, we love what we're doing, and uh, we're excited to share that progress with you all today. So thank you for your time in advance, and uh, I have a brief presentation. So the last time that we were uh, with you all, we were talking about what Riverfront Park used to be, this lovely uh, verdant, uh, engaging space that people could really enjoy going down to the water and uh, wanting to bring a lot of that life and vitality back to the park. And so we also talked about with that life and vitality needing to have a number of different activities in the space. And so one of the pieces that I'm going to be updating uh, today is all the activities and the events and the moments that we have created within the Esplanade itself. This was the master plan that you all uh, hopefully recall seeing uh, and had endorsed. Um, and what I'm excited to share is that uh, with our community gathering zone on the north, our arrival and gateway zone in the center, and then our family and garden zone to the south, we are delivering uh, to the city and the citizens of this wonderful city uh, the master plan that you all gave the foundation the opportunity to implement. Uh, so where we're at today is not only are we delivering the approved master plan, uh, but we've also made some really great additions to the plan that we're excited to share with you. Um, but I also want to talk about the logistics, and I'll mention this at the end, but uh, we are moving quickly. We are delivering the 100% construction documents to the construction manager next Thursday. So I was furiously working through all those details before uh, driving to join you all today. Uh, but starting in April, after we use March to firm up all the bids, we will be starting on the north end of the project, which is essentially from the Main Street Bridge to ISB. Uh, that also allows for things like the Beach Street renovation and the seawall to be advancing on the southern portion. And then as you can see, in January of 2021, we would extend uh, the construction of the park space of the Esplanade to ISB down to Orange. And so we are on track for a fall, likely October of 2021 opening of just a really high, you know, uh, high class, a uh, class A, as uh, Hyatt has said to us multiple times, uh, park for the citizens of this great community. Uh, so this is uh, surely not nearly as exciting as the pretty illustrative master plan, but the point is just we are fully into CAD. We are going through every uh, T that needs to be crossed, I that needs to be dotted. We have a really fantastic team built around us. RSNH is the architect on this uh, plan. Uh, we also have Zev Cohen here in uh, the greater Daytona area as the civil engineers. Uh, so a, a good team. Um, so we're going to go through each of these elements, starting with the community gathering zone. And what I did was I took the same plans that uh, are our CAD plans and at least put a little splash of color on it showing all the trees that we're going to be adding. So this is going to become a very comfortable space to be in. And then I also was playing off of the project for public spaces and this idea of having people and opportunities and events happening in the park. And, and I put some indicators of what we're going to be doing. So starting on the north end, uh, we have also introduced, we call it kind of the, the landward uh, dog park that complements what's already happening on the island. Uh, we also have a fun game that we are calling Brownie's Alphabet Hunt. We're actually hiding uh, in little paw prints A through Z for kids to find throughout the entirety of the park. So just a way that we can, you know, actually create some early learning opportunities in the park itself. Uh, the Josie Rogers House, which is now uh, in the process of you know, being uh, reattached uh, after moving to the north, uh, will be anchoring that north end. Uh, as you can see from the plan, as you start coming into the event lawn, not only do we have an area set up for music in the park, art in the park, things of that nature, but we also have bookended that with some swings, both porch swings and just baby swings, even some toddler swings, just to create some moments for families to gather and to enjoy being right there on the water. Uh, the restroom that is in the center of the event lawn also helps to serve as a gateway and frames the connection to Manatee Island across the way. 
every point where we have a grade change is ADA accessible. So we have an ADA ramp any time that there is a grade change. So the idea is that everyone can enjoy this park space. As we continue to move south, uh, not only do we have swings on the other end, uh, but we also are incorporating a really neat slide into this dune that we're creating right there uh, between the ranger station and the event plaza. But that all pales in comparison to, I think, one of the most exciting pieces that I don't know we spent enough time talking about, but Bethune Plaza has really come alive as we've gone through the final design. It's directly on the intersection of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune Boulevard and Beach. And as you come down there, not only will you see this raised terracing, but in the center of it, we are working with Bob Lloyd and a group that is actually working on the sculpture that will be in the Capitol. And they're working with the same sculptor to create a uh, sculpture of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, um, specifically for Daytona, that will be right there on her namesake road. Uh, so we're, we're just hugely excited about just the significance of that moment right there in the center of this park. Uh, we also have uh, environmental pieces built in, not only through the sustainability of uh, how we're treating the stormwater with green techniques, but also things like an osprey tower right there beside the ranger station. As we move into the arrival and gateway zone, uh, we have the Halifax River Overlook. We're looking at opportunities to incorporate art with that. And of course, you have the Sweetheart Trail that is still going to be running through the space. And in addition to the 12 foot wide pathway that the Sweetheart Trail uh, includes, it also has a four foot section within that 12 feet that is going to be a resilient running surface. And right now we're working with the folks who actually do the resilient track for the Olympics uh, that will be uh, putting in this running track. So uh, pretty, pretty exciting things. As we move into the south section or the family and garden zone, uh, we start out with Fountain Plaza on the north side of ISB. You can see how we've resolved kind of the, the geometry around there. And we're bringing, I think, more prominence to the Veterans Monument and giving a landscape that really responds to it. We also have changed where the bridge location is, and we have turned it so that it lines up with uh, what we have all been calling the Bookland Bridge as it connects over to the library over on City Island. And then as you cross ISB, we start going to those four sections of the Botanical Garden, the first one being the Hammock Garden that is essentially extrapolating the oak hammocks that you see up and down the intracoastal. The splash pad, we have one of the best uh, water feature engineers working on that. You can see a representation of what the resilient surface is going to be. It's actually a product called Life Floor. Kids can run all over it, fall down, they bounce right back up. It's a really neat product. And so it's another commitment that the foundation has made to this being a, a really great uh, splash park and just overall park space. Uh, we have, of course, another restroom facility in the southern section, other opportunities for art, the promenade that's running along the seawall that the city uh, is working on uh, will create a, a really nice bookend uh, with a 12-foot pathway running along Beach Street and a 14-and-a-half-foot pathway going along the seawall. And then you can see in the final section a rose garden as well as our river garden and there's going to be just a really lovely moment that will be in there with the trellis etc and brownie we love brownie we're actually taking the uh, the statue and giving it even more prominence and it's essentially the southern terminus if you will of brownie's alphabet hunt that we are uh, crafting into the space um, we also as i mentioned have these two restrooms this is the one that's up in uh, manatee Plaza. So this was the one that uh, we had shown previously. We want to show that the elevations has just as much detailing as the rendering. So every rendering, every pretty picture that we put up in front of you, the foundation has been committed to execute those pretty pictures. So uh, we wanted just to share where we were at with all of this. This is the Central Ranger Station or Park Headquarters that's right beside the News Journal Center. You can see how we were architecturally connecting into that. And then finally, we have a way to harken back to the Burgoyne Casino down by the splash pad. And so turrets and all, uh, we uh, really have, I think, some fun architecture scattered throughout the park. And so again, the project schedule, we deliver 100% construction documents to the 
contractor uh, next Thursday. I'll be heading home to keep working on it as we wrap it all up. Uh, March, we will have the bidding and then we get started in April. So if there are any questions, I also have Dan Human uh, with RSNH and Chris Rowley with Zeb Cohen. We're here to answer any questions. I have a quick question. I yes, ma'am. You can answer this. Um, first of all, thank you very much for taking on the extra effort with making sure that flooring was nice for the splash pad. Um, I know that's quite a bit more expensive to add that flooring. It is. Um, um, Hyatt Brown is going to take that extra mile and, and, and do it the way it needs to be done. But just really quick, what areas will be available for rental for um, events, weddings, parties? Are there specific areas that will be available to the public for rental? I can talk about the specific areas that we're crafting. I don't know if Hyatt might be better in terms of wanting to talk about the rental piece. Uh, well, one of the things that we want to do, yeah. one of the things we want to do is we want to have a constant procession of things like Quinita has been talking about something going on every weekend in the park once we get it up and rolling and so uh, we want to make it a destination as Derek said and this the second thing is is that we want to make it so that it appeals to all kinds of people and so the wedding piece of course is one area uh, if uh, we do not have park rules yet we have to do that and make it subject to your approval uh, but what we probably would be able to do is have special events for special organizations like children's organizations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you look at the northern end of the park, that's kind of where we're thinking there would be more of the larger sort of outdoorish um, uh, music festivals, uh, art, et cetera. And we're looking for something uh, that we can do there that's unique and different uh, for this park. So. We, if you have any suggestions on some of these things, we are, we're wide open. As a matter of fact, I'm speaking to the leadership group of the Chamber of Commerce, their leadership. Um, I guess it's a committee that gets together and they get the young leaders and they talk to them about you know, the future of the area. I'm going to challenge them on Friday of next week to bring to us a list of all the events they think would be really, really interesting for the people of the area bring them down to make this a real destination. So we just don't have a, this, this has been a lot more complex uh, uh, than I had thought, but we're, we're on the way. Thank, Thank you. you for um, could, I, could I ask a question about that? Um, I have a question, sir. Um, interesting point about the outdoor venue space. Would there be any structures at all? So right now it's just outdoor. If it was a wedding, it would be an outdoor space, right. correct? Okay. So we own the Josie Rogers building, is that correct? Um, any thought, just curious, any thought of doing anything with the Halifax Humane Society um, with the dog park being right there? Well, here, here is the uh, problem that we have. Um, we don't want to be involved with the responsibility of the Josie Rogers. Mm. So whatever is the Josie Rogers house is, that's the city of Daytona. Okay. Now, um, we are going to have a nice dog park there, and I don't know exactly how there would be a coordinative sort of thing. But, uh, you know, it would be up to you all. Okay. Uh, what we're interested, though, in doing is doing all kinds of diverse sort of things that will bring more different people. kinds of people down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah. where we're on. I'm, I'm hoping that the city is working with the park to create mile markers for running. Because I'm really hoping we could do some 5Ks out there and some kind of running events throughout the park. Are we <coughs> doing something with the Sweetheart Trail and the park throughout the city? So. Do you well, mind me saying that we've already been working on that? So uh, the that's idea great. is that we, we, it would be seamless. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a plan that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> that is going to be a wow. Okay. And it will attract runners from probably all over the southeast for a specific reason. So not going to talk about it now. Um, but uh, that's something that I've been thinking about and others are now starting to mention that. So, yes, we got All right. We got Thank you, idea. sir. I have a question. What are we doing with Manatee Park? That's still the dog park for us? No, no, here's the deal on that. Let's, let's think about this. We have to have a source of income to offset the expenses of the park, which are going to run more than what the city is committed to. Mm -hmm. 
And so what we're going to have to do is get um, the, the destination of the downtown park to where a lot of people are coming to the park, all different kinds of people. And then what we want to do is find a really, really nice restaurant, bar, facility, et cetera, and get them to make a substantial financial commitment where the park would get a piece of the gross. And to, to get the, to make that um, successful, you're going to have to have a lot of people coming down there to get the kind of investment that we have in mind. We don't have anybody in mind. We haven't talked to anyone. We have just this last weekend, someone came to me and talked to me about a particular restaurant in Miami that is apparently on a small island or something, mm -hmm. and the people go bananas. And just think about it. you could come there on your boat <laughs> and have dinner, and you know you don't have to worry about the police going back uh, if you're drinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> not a bad idea. Just think about that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whatever. You know, it's true. <laughs> so, um, so that, that's the plan. We've got this thing that we're creating. Every time you do something really good, mm -hmm. it always costs more. Mm -hmm. And so once this is done, it's got to be placed into the financial situation where it can continue at that same level. It's not going to be here and this. It's got to be here and this. Mm -hmm. And that takes George Washington. We're not doing anything on Manatee Island until we get this thing up and running. Okay. So it's going to remain where it is. All right, thank you. One right. other thing that someone asked, uh, we're going to have to fence the north part of the park, north part of the park, uh, which is down to ISB, because we can't allow anybody to come in and get hurt. And you see, when you've got construction going on, that's a serious thing. So it will be fenced. That will preclude people from coming on to the park. And so then once it's open, of course, then we have whatever our rules are to do with the power park. One more question. I know, uh, I think Juanita had mentioned this a while back. I don't know who, who exactly, but we had talked about um, having areas where little hot dog stands or different things like that, little carts can be set up. Will that be something the city will, will no. do or you all will do we're, that? Or, or is that still in the works? We're, listen, we're, we're, we're open to anything that works. See, this has got to be uh, something that people like, and so it's not an austere kind of monument thing. Mm -hmm. This is this is interactive kind of right. action thing. So whatever works, works. And you know, for instance, uh, for years there has been um, a very large uh, art show. Uh, is it twice a year? Once a year. Mm -hmm. year that takes up the whole downtown area. We would expect that to expand. Uh, and so, because people want to come, and then one of the things that we would want is that people that come to that art show then would have a, a greater interest in doing something on B Street with the merchants and all those things. Because this, if this works the way I think it's going to work, the merchants are going to be really, really happy because there's going to be a lot of people wanting to be downtown. And if you go out, for instance, to One Daytona and see that and see the activity there and the things you can do there, all sorts of things. This has an advantage over that. We got the river. I mean, where can you get that? Where else can you find that? This is a beautiful river. Right? Oh, no, thank no, you. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? Well, uh, I think I want to say thank you for the level, not that, not that we expected anything different than this high quality of, of thoughtfulness that the committee is putting towards bringing a project. That, and I like the idea that you said it's not designed to be some shrine or some monument, but that you want it to be deeply interactive. It's for the people. And that's what we, we as a community need to try to embrace this whole idea rather than assuming that it's, you know, a mausoleum. It's to come to life and to, 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 to really uh, bring us also, what I, what I really like about it and what really excites me is this whole idea of making it a place for people of 
diverse backgrounds to come to. I really in, have a, a vision of seeing this as just being like a centering point for all of us or all sorts of activities. Uh, and, and so I've got goosebumps just not because of the finished product, but because of the thoughtfulness that you all are engaged in and, and in terms of the future of it. So uh, thanks. Well, thank you very much. Now, Andrea is here. Mm -hmm. a person to be the leader, the manager of the park who is a promoter. They got to be someone who understands how to do what you're talking about, what you're talking about, what you're talking about to promote the park, to have events that are really interesting. So uh, that's going to be, uh, once we get this thing started, we're going to start looking for that person. And there is a person, uh, and it may not be here. Uh, we may have to go out of town. We'd prefer to find someone here. But if we can't find the right person, because this got to be right from the get-go. And the first thing is that leadership and the right leadership will make it even better than what we would expect. So that's the other challenge. Oh, awesome. So thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Very good. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. It's good to join you all. Okay, moving on to item six, which is our administrative items. Item number 6A is the budget office, fiscal year 2019-20, first quarter budget amendment resolution. A resolution amending the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget to reduce revenues and capital expenditures and providing an effective date. Second. A motion and a second. We'll wait for the energy to uh, exit the room. And uh, I do have one speaker, Mr. We have Ray. one speaker. Who's called this? Okay. Our first speaker is John Nicholson. budget originally six months ago. We reduced it, I thought, when we were not going to sell the property about two months ago. No, that's so this is. is this one. That's what so we're is. down to like six million, yeah. give or take. Give or take. And then we owe two and a half million dollars on the bond issues. So we're down to like three and a half million, give or no. take. I'm not going to agree with you on the numbers because I don't have them in front of me, John. Oh, okay. But generally it's two and a half you million wanna dollars. You want to get, the only thing that's happening tonight is we're reducing the budget by $1.6 million. Okay. And that is so, totally associated with one, act, one um, the project that we were going to sell that and didn't sell. We were going to sell it didn't sell. Correct. So my, I'm making the point that there's money there to do the two things that I requested. One is Ocean Avenue, the least of which we can do is put a sidewalk on the, north, uh, the uh, east end. To have those uh, two hotels renovated and have nobody be able to walk along that section. I mean, I drive it often because I know somebody that has a business on that property. Um, these people are coming out of these hotels walking in the street and their cars zooming up and down. It's really a safety hazard. There is absolutely no park, uh, no sidewalk on the east side. The west side, you can't use it because there are poles and all kinds of things blocking the sidewalk as you walk. So I'm asking you if there is plenty of money at least put the sidewalk in for safety. And then secondly, we own that property for the uh, beach approach between A1A and uh, Ocean Avenue. I'm asking to match the one that the county has between uh, Ocean Avenue and the ocean, especially since the tattoo parlor and the ice cream parlor, which is actually a tea parlor at this point, uh, has put in like five to ten thousand dollars in landscaping along that already. 
All we have to do is supplement. They've done most of the heavy lifting. All we have to do is put in plants. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'm not familiar with what he's saying, but I would like to, you and I to have a secret meeting and go down and <laughs> take a visit and look at what he's discussing. Yeah, I'd be I'd be interested in, to know too. Okay, because I'm not, is, not familiar uh, with it. Is Mr. Nichols speaking about the area between Rosalini's that we were discussing today? Is he speaking of the same area there? Are you the speaking of the Rosalini thing? Yeah, well, I so am so familiar with that. Area. So we are dealing with that? Yes, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. We so are Mr. we are moving forward with oh. the Yeah, we had conversation with that, and there's a plan there, and so we are working on that right now. All right. Well. That was my only speaker. Okay, we have a motion mm -hmm. and a second. Um, all those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. 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 Those in opposition, same sign. <coughs> Motion carries 7-0. Uh, Moving on to item 6B, it's util Utilities Department, Blue Road Water Main Improvements Resolution. A resolution approving the expenditure of tax increment funds from the Blue Road Redevelopment Area Trust Fund in the amount of $181,338 for the replacement of a water main, together with the replacement of a 25 water service lines on Blue Road between Fairview Avenue and Blue Road Bridge, and providing an effective date. I have a motion from Commissioner Gilliland, a second from Commissioner Henry. Do we have any questions or speakers? All right, all those in favor, let it be noted by saying aye. Aye. Those in opposition, same sign. Motion also carries 7 0. Do we have any comments from the commission regarding our CRA meeting? No comments from our attorney or our manager. This meeting is adjourned. We will reconvene our regularly scheduled meeting in approximately three minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs>